Hello, welcome back. Like I said last week, we are now in the middle of a federal election campaign. And don't worry, but well, here in Canada, if you're listening from Canada, and don't worry, I will not tell you for who to vote uh, for many different reasons. Uh, one of them being that I listened to my father's stories who, when he was young, growing up in the province of Quebec, he heard those priests telling their congregant or flock, they remind them that heaven was blue and hell was red. Not going to do that. Also, um, another reason is I belong to the United Church of Canada, and the United Church of Canada have this strange, strange relationship with um, government. Not with election. We encourage people to vote. We usually have some sort of guide to, you know, uh, how to ask questions to your candidate and so on, which, which is very, very interesting. No, it's, it's this strange relationship with governments and not just one, many of them. It's, it's the former moderator, uh, Peter Short, the very reverend Peter Short, that once said, United Church of Canada historically has seen itself as the official opposition to the Canadian government, regardless of the color of affiliation. We are always saying to the government, well, you're doing a little too much of this, not enough of that. Basically, we're never satisfied. That's who we are in our DNA, I guess. And when we come to the Bible, we, see, we like to see the prophets who are criticizing the kings and calling the rich and the powerful to follow God's way. And then we come in the New Testament to this first letter to Timothy. And the chapter 2 begins with, first of all, I'm, I'm going to read it just to make sure I got it right. First of all, I urge that supplications prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings, and all who are in high position, so we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. And like I said, as United Church person, that goes against our natural way of doing things. We understand, we understand that when this letter was written, Christianity uh, was not even called Christianity, but the, the, the first disciples of Jesus were a very small number of people. And I can understand they were trying to gain the protection of the powerful, of the king, at least, if not the pro protection, stop being persecuted. So it always helped to state publicly that you're praying for the king. I get that. But today, uh, we cannot say in Canada that we are persecuted. Not even close. So the question is, can we really pray for our leaders besides prayers to change their mind? like prayers of thanksgiving. Well, the author, the short answer, the, the short answer the author is offering is yes. <laughs> yes. We are reminded that we cannot pick and choose who is worthy of our prayers. We've been told that God loves everyone without exception. It's difficult for us human beings to understand that because of course we love our friends, our neighbor, family members, you know, people completely at opposite than us. It's difficult. It's difficult. But the challenge is to try to emulate what God is doing, to follow in God's path set for us. 
And if it means to pray, it means to pray for our friends and those who might not be our friends. To pray for those with whom we agree and those we disagree. Those who are the voice voiceless and the poor and the outcasts of our society. And also for the kings, the president, the prime minister, the rich and powerful also. And it's a reminder that maybe we're too obsessed with all those divisions. The us versus them. The good guys, the bad guys. This new world Jesus came to announce this new realm, this new kingdom, this new kingdom is offered to all. There's no uh, restriction. There's no VIP section. It's for everyone. And so by our prayer, we can start breaking these division, human-made division, and try to bring people together to maybe try to see a human, human being in one of our adversary or someone we don't get along. Try to see a child of God. Try to discover what is good in that person and to say thank you God. And that's a huge challenge for all of us, especially in time of election. But I think even if it's difficult, it's worth, it worth it. So once again, don't forget, Election Day in Canada is October 21st. So please go to vote. I'm not telling you how to vote, but please go to vote. And until then, try to maybe pray for our leaders, and those who will make those decisions. Pray for those who don't have power. Why not? Pray for everyone. Thanks again for being there, for watching. I remain the lectionary man, Reverend Stéphane Vermette. And until next time, take care of yourself. And bye-bye.